Hey, I'm Jelle, and I like to make games in one month. I've been making games for a little over a year now, and I was really running out of ideas. And when I have no ideas, I brush my teeth, hoping something will come to me. Sadly, there was no floating toy this time. So I looked up, and that was the moment I saw the most amazing thing ever. Myself. I mean, myself in a reflection. Of a reflection. I saw myself in an infinite reflection. So I was going to explore the wondrous world of fractals. You might be wondering, what the heck are fractals? Imagine you have a... Wait, don't imagine. I'll just show you. So you have a cube. No, no, you have a big cube. Now make a cross with smaller cubes and subtract the cross from the big cube. Repeat this process for the remaining small cubes until you are satisfied. Which is never, so it will repeat indefinitely. This iterative process of doing the same thing over and over and over again forms the basis of fractals. To achieve this in a game, I couldn't just use the regular rendering methods, because that would be way too slow. I needed something much more efficient for repeating patterns. That's when I came across the best discovery since hot water. Ray marching. I won't go into too much detail, since there are other videos that do a way better job in explaining this than I will ever do. But the basic principle is this. Your screen is made up of millions of pixels. To know what color that pixel needs to be, in order to create an image, the ray marching algorithm sends out the ray into the world over a certain distance. It repeats this process until it has hit an object. The special thing about this is that rather than just having an object in the world, you use a function that calculates the distance from a point in space to the closest point of that object. So you send out a ray with the length equal to the distance of the closest point so you will never overshoot the ray. You repeat that process until the distance to the closest point is very very small. That is where you know you've hit something. Just repeat this a million times for each pixel and ta-da! You have an image. This meant that I had to use the so-called distance functions to create 3D objects. Rather than creating shapes with my eyes, like a normal person, I had to create them using math. I started out with the easiest shape you can create, a sphere. The distance to a sphere is basically the radius. With the sphere created, it was time to let some mathematical magic loose. I used this website as my functions bible and went straight into coding some cool stuff. I created infinite spheres infinite holes, and of course, what we are here for, fractals. Because I was basically tracing rays, there were some nice rendering effects I could create, like shadows, ambient occlusion, and depth. This made the fractal look very cool. Now I hear you saying, you know, all this talk about infinite spaces and fractals is fun, but what is the game about? Let me explain. You play as a lost spaceship who finds itself in a strange world. It is your task to find the portal back to your planet. Before you can find the portal, however, you must first collect enough star bits to unlock it. To make this all work, I needed three things. A wayfinder that shows you the direction of the star bits, a dynamic environment made with fractals, and the most difficult part, the collision with the environment. Because everything I've created now is basically a camera effect. It's like a piece of paper that you hold in front of the camera. There is no way for the spaceship to know where the object actually is. I looked everywhere on the internet, but the solutions I found went right over my head. So I came up with my own solution using the built-in Unity physics system. After a lot of trial and error, and of course, go, 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 I realized that in addition to only calculating the distance to the object to the camera, I could do the same thing for my spaceship. This allowed me to check if the spaceship was close to the object. This meant I had to recreate the Raymart shader in C-sharp code so it could be read by the CPU. The problem was that I didn't know where that closest point was. 
My brilliant idea was to create a bunch of points around the spaceship and check the distance to the fractal from each of those points. If a point was inside the fractal, the spaceship would have hit the object in that point. I then created a collision sphere on every point that would be inside the fractal that my spaceship could collide with. That's why I gave my spaceship a force field. So the collision shape would be a nice and easy sphere. And ta-da! I can no longer pass through the object. Amazing. The dynamic environment was where the real fun began. As we all know, math has a lot of variables. And so do distance functions. So I was able to change these variables in a bunch of ways to create amazing fractals. I created a level where these fractals would be randomized. Meaning every time you start it up, you get a totally different fractal. In the end, I created four fractals. The mangrove sponge, a mangrove sphere, a Tierpinski triangle, and an inverse sphere box thingy. To share the fun I've had in creating these fractals, I also created a creator level, where you can customize your fractal to your heart's content and fly around when you are satisfied. But that wasn't enough. I also added the source files without all the unnecessary stuff from the game on GitHub, so you can easily create your own fractal game in Unity. I released the game on Newgrounds and itch.io and also made a build for Windows, Mac and Linux. Play it now, for free, everywhere via the link below. I hope you enjoyed this fractal adventure and I'll see you guys next time, where I'll try to invent the fifth dimension with my calculator. Bye!